Hi everybody, welcome to the first Orange Tea and Thai webinar. I'm Raymond here in my study room to wherever you are. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that today I can share with you some insights for our property market in the midst of this COVID situation. And before I start on my main topic, do allow me to shed some light of this situation. Today, of course, we are in this pandemic, COVID-19, and definitely it has struck fear. We can see that the Singapore STI market dipped 27%, which is a 10-year low. And this fear has gripped the market. Fear is very contagious. Frankly, most of us or all of us can be fearful within five minutes, but we cannot be confident just within five minutes. And especially today, with our social media, with YouTube, with our WhatsApp, our so many messaging platforms, fear just instantly spread among the community. Compared with SARS when it happened, all these platforms were not around. Today, because of this pandemic, we see news that USA, Mr. Donald Trump, has announced a $2 trillion virus rescue package. So how does all this affect the market? How does all this affect our property market in Singapore? We do see reports that March, private property, private home sales plunged about 32%. So today, definitely I will share some light of the current situation. Looking at two days ago, a report came out on our HDB market. HDB market volume and price dropped in first quarter. Our HDB resale transactions fell from 6,339 to 5,893 in the first three months. This meant a 7% drop in the first quarter and as compared to the last quarter. But yet, if we compare year on year with 2019 first quarter, this volume is actually still higher, about 21.9%. On the same note, we also see that analysts say resale volume is affected by the circuit breaker because buyers cannot go and view properties. So it is expected to pick up because HDB market is a needs market. And eventually, when circuit breaker is over, I believe the HDB market will pick up. How about the private market? Quarter one, private property home prices fell 1% as we, we enter this 2020 with the, with the circuit breaker and all the COVID outbreak. It definitely has dampened sales. We can see as well that resale and sub-sale transactions as a result fell 12.9%. New home sales altogether moved about 2,149 units down 12%. But compared with March last year, it was an up 16.9%. Overall, developers also launched lesser units. Given that it's a COVID situation, some developers may choose to hold back the launches. In a way, this, on this backdrop, Annalise says the long-term effect still remain uncertain because we are still in the midst of this pandemic. However, a good indication that analyst says is that Singapore property market always recover after economic downturn. So let me crunch some numbers. Let me, let me take some light on the situation right now. We can see that this COVID situation, we can take some heart in the situation. What do I mean? You can see that over time now, the number of discharge is growing every day. Although we have new cases that is coming up, but the authorities do tell us that most of them come from the dormitory. From the dormitory from 13 April to where we are right now, most of the cases are from the dormitory. And of course, given time, I believe our government will put the situation in control. We can see as well that the circuit breaker is working because we can see that the import cases has dropped to zero 
at the same time, local transmission is now just about 15 to 20 cases per day. So as we all play our part to stay at home, I believe it's a matter of time and hopefully by 1st of June, we are all out of this situation. So how can we look at our market? One good news I can say is that as we look ahead, we look at a country that was first affected, China, COVID will end. Is that COVID will end. It's good to see that after COVID ended, buyers are back in the market, transactions picked up, volume actually surpassed the average volume, the level that was in the final quarter of 2019. Basically, there's still pent up demand. Basically, people still believe in the property market. As a result, you see in Singapore, even in the midst of this circuit breaker, astoundingly, there were still transactions. A total of 43 new homes were sold in the, when it started the pandemic, uh, the circuit breaker on 7th of April. New homes like in Treasure at Tampines, seven transactions were clocked. Copper at Newton, the last new launch project that was launched during this circuit breaker, oh, before, just before the circuit breaker, eight units were transacted. And you can see even Jetscape, Sterling Residences, Florence Residences, all have more than three, have three unit sale as well as tapestry. So this shows that buyers still believe in our property market. Looking at all, overall, we can see that people usually put our money into all these asset classes. We hold our cash, we put our, our investment into stocks, bonds, commodities. But what really sets property apart from the other three, which is stocks, bonds, and commodities, is that I see in this situation fear and greed that grip the people's heart. When the bear market is here, people are gripped by fear and anxiety. When it's bull market, people will be moved by envy and greed. Whereas the real estate market is a needs market and as well as a long-term investment market. So there is a big difference when you are investing or you are speculating. What do I mean here? I like to quote this, our Warren Buffett. He says that investing means taking compensated risk. Speculating is taking uncompensated risk. See, most people, according to Warren Buffett, they ain't investing. A lot of people are speculators. When they put their money on stocks and shares in certain companies, they don't really believe in that company. They just merely put in because they hear say, oh, their friends say, oh, this company is do, going to do well. Oh, they hear say, oh, that company is going to get this project. So they put their money in, but yet they don't understand and don't really believe the long term, the nature of the business. Warren Buffett, he advocates long term investment. He advocates diversification of your portfolio. So. He will also tell you when you invest, don't just invest in the industry that you are in. Because when your industry is affected, you want to have investment coming in from other industries as well. So the golden question that he has, or rather I have for you, is are you investing or are you speculating? Of course, I believe all of you who are here today, you are looking at investment. And today, I'll be sharing with you seven key reasons why you should be looking out for property right now. Okay, let's go. Number one, reason number one is that there will be lesser supply in the future. As we know, in the property market, developers get land only from two sources. The first source is GRS, which stands for Government Land Sales. The second source is on block, which is collective sales of the existing projects. Why do I say that there is lesser supply in the future? Four reasons why the on block fever has ended. Two years ago, on block fever was pretty hot, but after which on block fever really ended. Why is that so? Reason number one, 
ABSD adds to the cost of land acquisition. In July 2018, government rolled out a new round of cooling measure, and one of the measures was upon the developers. That as developers, when they acquire a piece of land, they must pay a 5% non remittal ABSD. On top of that, in the event they don't sell or build finish within five years, they must pay another 25%. This is very big, big risk. Imagine if your, if your land cost is a billion dollars, your tax for 25% is almost 250 million. That's hefty, isn't it? Number two, higher the, the developmental charge. DC rates spike 13.8% across the board. 116 out of 118 sectors in Singapore saw higher DC rates. So, 6% to 29% increase. As such, this all adds on to the cost and risk of developers. Reason number three and four is more of like impact from URA and LTA, that there's traffic impact studies, making sure that traffic flow still smooth despite the increased number of units. And at the same time, URA restrictions on the number of units that's built on a piece of land. As a result, 99.co states, which I agree, that there will be lesser mega plots due to all these reasons. So, now on block fever has ended. What do we have? We will have likely GLS launches, more uh, plots coming in only from GLS launches. At the same time, what are the projects that's in the market? Let's take a look. This year in 2020, I put down the list for you, in front of you. We can notice one trend that is 60%, almost 60 to 70% of the launches are in CCR and RCR. And most of the launches, as we can see, CCR and RCR were quite well received. Recently, the M was launched and 70% was sold. Copper at Newton, more than 80 units were sold during even the COVID situation. Upcoming, there are launches that's coming up. But at the same time, I'd like to point out to you that in OCR, outside central region, because this is where upgraders always look at, only six plots are in the market, are in the pipeline. And out of the six, actually, two already launched, Ola and Park Canberra. As you can see, the out of the six, three of them were ECs as well. So for this year, they ain't really a lot of uh, supply in OCR. How about upcoming GLS plots? Let's look ahead. What about GLS plots? In this year, they released six pieces of land for sale by, the, by government. And out of these six, four already been confirmed, only left two more plots, which is in Tanamera, Kanchil, and Jalan Anak Bukit. Out of this confirmed list, only six plots are available. Reserve list, there are seven of them. How do we go about? They must, developers must beat at least the reserve price, then they can release the land out for the other developers to beat. So looking at the market, we shall wait and see whether any developers will beat at least the reserve price so that it will release more land into the market. So one golden question, a lot of buyers ask me, even just before this webinar, they always ask me, Raymond, will prices drop? I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you whether prices will drop or not. But I always answer with this explanation. I say, sir, I understand where you're coming from. As a buyer, if I'm in the market, I also will ask this golden question. So let's dissect the price. Let's say, what is holding up prices? What is really holding up prices? I would say two main factors. Number one, cost push. Cost push. What makes up cost? To developers, when they have to develop, develop a project, they have land costs, they have labor costs, material costs, they have their overheads that they have to juggle with. And the second reason that hold up prices is demand pool. Demand pool. Population growth, which we know Singapore is slated to grow to 6.5 million to 6.9 million by 2030. 
upgraders, downgraders, and foreigners, which I'll later cover about it. So we see that in today's market, cost push. Is it because of this COVID-19 situation, labor costs will come down? I don't think so. Developers overhead will come down? I don't think so. Is government not going to grow our population? I don't think so. Are people held back, hold back on their upgrading? Probably, if they're affected by the COVID situation. But most likely, if people come to a place where they move out of the situation, they will consider upgrading again, downgrading, and of course, foreigners. So if you look at all the factors, I can say, if really significantly you will bring down prices only one way, likely, is land cost. But looking at the, the projects which I mentioned earlier, there are only three types of projects. That is already in the market, land price already been locked in, they can't be changing their land cost. Those projects that have not launched yet, as, as the same time, they also have already locked in their land cost. So the only way that really prices may see a little bit of correction is new plots. But looking at new plots, GLS only have two for this year. So I believe developers who will come in and bid, they will be actually still holding up the prices. So we shall see whether prices will come down. Reason number two that you should be looking out for properties right now is that we have covered on supply. Let's look at demand. Looking at demand, there will be a record number of MOP flats this year. Averagely, each year is about 17,000 to 19,000 units of HDB dwellers reaching their MOP. But this year, surprisingly, 2020 is a bumper year of more than 27,000 units. So if we look at, let's be conservative here, not say that oh, everyone upgrades 30%, just 30%, it will mean at least about 8,000 households they will desire to upgrade. Even because of COVID situation, they hold back their plans, we'll see at least even 4,000 to 5,000. And why is that bringing a demand in the market? Because you've got to know all these MOP owners, they have been waiting. They waited three years for the HDB blocks to build. They waited five years for the MOP. And a lot of them are usually quite young and they are waiting to upgrade their lifestyle, their family in a, in a better housing and of course investment wise various various reasons reason number three is that current supply is taken up i put in front of you right now you can see the save so the seven mega launches from treasure at companies to florence residences all these are launches which is more than 1000 units you look at their take up rate most of them have crossed even the 60 percent mark this is phenomenal because projects like Treasure actually just been launched last year, March, and yet more than half is already sold within one year. And you look at projects like Riverfront Residences, it's already 86.1%. This is phenomenal. And you may say, I, I choose to wait. I still think there's still enough supply in the market. I understand where you're coming from, sir. But let's look deeper. For example, Park Esta, just left with about 16%. We may say 16%, there's still good supply. But the unit that you want, probably you're looking at a three-bedroom plus sexy, only left with 26. And looking at the facing, the flooring that you want to buy, you may not have left a lot of choices. Another reason that I hope that you, you will start looking sooner than later is because of price movement. You look at, I put an example for you, this Kingsford Water Bay example. In March 2017, when it's still selling, it is about transacting between 1,001 to 1,290. When it's almost 100% sold, prices was moving from 1,350 to 1,470. However, after it's 100% sold, prices came down a little bit. 1,350, 2,366. Why is that so? Not because developer sells cheaper, but because now the sellers who is in the market are those that are sub-selling. They are sub-selling or reselling. So they are 
actually one of the sellers that bought earlier, one of the owners that bought earlier, so they can afford to sell even slightly lower than developers last selling price and they still make a profit already. On top of that, let me show you another example. New launches, prices usually move in phases. So for example, Atra, this project in Red Hill, we can see that for a unit that's on 0504, it was sold somewhere in 2017 1.2 million, a two bidder at 1.2 million. Recently, just in February, the same stack, meaning just 35, 35 floors higher, it has been sold at 1.672. This is meaning the buyer that bought the 40th floor have to pay $472,000 more. So today, it's not wise to wait longer if you're actually looking in the market. Reason number four, foreigners will be back. As we know, Singapore is a hot spot to attract wealthy foreigners. Many, many uh, wealthy businessmen made the news. We can see people like James Dyson buying a super penthouse in Warwick. At the same time, also buying a good class bungalow. On top of that, Jack Ma might be building a super bungalow as well. Why do they like Singapore? We may not, sometimes we are living in Singapore and we may not see the attractiveness as much. Do you know that we are one of the best country in terms of education, in ways of doing business? At the same time, there's political stability to the rich. All these are very key factors. On top of that, we are not charging any capital gain tax, which you can see in the chart above, Singapore and Hong Kong are only two countries that don't charge capital gain tax. As well as estate tax, you see that countries like Japan, South Korea, they charge estate tax. When someone passes on, they, the government ch charges a tax on the market value of a person's asset. So that's why Singapore is a bright spot, a place where it attracts all these wealthy foreigners. On the same note, COVID-19 may also amplify the attractiveness of Singapore market. Singapore government has been very transparent and proactive in taking all the measures. As we can see, all the foreigners usually account for a lot of tran transactions in CCR. And after travel restriction is lifted, most likely, I believe, the demand will surge. Recently, just to share with you, two units were sold in Bulava 88. This project, these two units were four bedroom and bought by a buyer at $10 million each. Amazing, isn't it? Is Even in the midst of COVID circuit breaker, these two units were transacted. Reason number five that you should start looking at property right now is that you should leverage on low interest rates. With the current situation, most governments will be adopting the expansionary fiscal policy. What do I mean by expansionary fiscal policy? Basically, they have to spur the market. In order to spur the market, they have to do three things. Number one, they have to increase their spending to create jobs. Number two, they have to reduce their taxes. And number three, they have to keep interest rates low. These will promote Employment, this will promote trading. They won't be adopting contractionally. What is contractionary? Contractionary is only when the, the, the economy is inflation. There's inflation and they have to bring prices down. Then they have to reduce spending, increase taxes, increase interest rates. So looking at government, most government will be adopting expansionary fiscal policy. It will mean that our cyborg, which is our interbank borrowing rate, will be kept low. It, how is it derived? It's derived by the lending and borrowing between FIs. At the same time, it is affected by US federal rates and liquidity in our banking sector. So looking ahead, I believe market will still be strong because one of the key reasons interest rate is low. Let me, keep, let me share a bit example here, make it more easier to understand. 
let's say you take a million dollar loan based on 30 years repayment schedule. If interest rates is as low as 1.63, the installment per month is about $3,513, out of which only 1342 goes to paying your interest. And the good thing is that you are clearing $2,171 in terms of the principal amount. Comparing with if the interest rate is at 3.5, the installment will work out to be 4,491. And more than half actually goes to interest. You are clearing lesser principal amount. So it's not good for an investor if interest rate is high. Just to share, for example, in Malaysia, just up north above us, their interest rate is about 4.55. So as an investor, it's good news for you that interest rates are going to stay low. Reason number six is effects of stimulus. The effects of stimulus. I plotted the graph in front of you, the ups and downs of our PPI, our residential PPI, no lender PPI. Our market for the last 27 years have went through the ups and downs through all the economic situation. Asia economic crisis, 911, at the same time, Lehman Brothers. But point to note, the last point when cycle came down was due to cooling measure. It's not a, 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 it's not a crisis in itself. It's more of artificially implemented to bring cooling off to the market. So what does it tell us? What does this price index tell us? It moves through times for the 27 years, but if I plot the peak and the bottom of the graph, it shows one key thing, that over time, prices go up. So property is a good hedge against inflation because the money that you keep in your bank may not be able to hedge against inflation it will drop in value. But if you buy property, it's a good way to retain value. On top of that, I'd like to point out a few things of all this crisis. The last round of epidemic that we have was SARS. After SARS, government made two major change. Made two major change. The first major change was to decide to open up for casinos. Why? Because casinos create jobs. At the same time, it also government also had way big uh, heavy taxes on the casinos. Number two, second change is that they decide that we cannot stay at where we are in terms of our population. When SARS broke out, our population was about only 3.3 million Singaporeans. So they see that it's not able to sustain the economy in the long run. So that's why they decided to open up and draw more foreigners, foreigner, foreign talents into Singapore. These two changes brought forth, there was growth in the property prices. However, with Lehman Brothers happening, market dipped. And key point to note, it had a V-shaped recovery. The V-shaped recovery caused a 60% growth in the market within a short four years. Within four years, market picked 60% and government have to come in to introduce seven rounds of cooling measure. This seven rounds of cooling measure is three SSDs, two ABSD and two LTV cooling measure. It's finally with TDSR, then they cool down the market. How much should they cool down? Cool down another 12%. 12% over a period of 15 quarters, almost four years. Then finally, people or buyers start to feel that market is not going to come down anymore. They start moving in. That's how we see that in 2018, prices pick 7.9 and government has to introduce the eighth round of cooling measure with the introduction of ABSD. On the high side, it's actually very wise. Why? Because at the same time, during that period, July 2018, that's when US and China started the trade war. So our government, with cooling measure, actually kept the prices in check. But key point to note, what causes the market to turn that 60% for that four years? It was 
quantitative easing. It was the US government releasing $4 trillion to rescue the market. So $4 trillion was released to rescue the financial uh, situation that Lehman Brothers collapse have caused. Today, with this COVID situation, America is again coming out with stimulus of up to $2 trillion. And today, with this worldwide pandemic, it has caused countries, the G20 countries, to come and introduce fiscal stimulus to rescue the economy. As you can see, stimulus package will reinvigorate the, the economy by boosting employment and encourage spending. The downside of this fiscal stimulus is that there will be higher debts, but at the same time, more money in circulation. How does it affect us? I believe just like what Lehman Brothers effect did, because though COVID situation affected the market in this season, but the after effects of COVID will be this stimulus that's going to flow into the market. Money that comes into APEC, because Asia Pacific is where 60% of world's population is in. Money will definitely flow into this part of the world, which Singapore is in, and Singapore is a hotspot. Just for example, Japan has passed the stimulus package that's worth up to 20% of its GDP that amounts to 108.2 trillion yen. Looking at this situation, definitely prices will go up. This is the after effect of this stimulus package. How about Singapore? How would Singapore react? I would say, I believe that our Singapore will rebound fast. Why is that so? Reason being WEF have, have ranked us as the number one most competitive economy in the world. This is not an easy feat. Assessed across 141 economies based on 12 pillars, environment, human capital, innovation, ecosystem, and the markets. We came in specifically number one in infrastructure, health, and labor market. Why is it so? Because we are number one in our infrastructure in terms of road connectivity, our air transport, our seaport services. We are world number one. We are also number one in terms of health and labor market, our employer relationships with the employee are, are ranked number one in the world. You may, you may say, Raymond, you may challenge me, say, Raymond, all this infrastructure, we may be just be overtaken over time so easily. Another country can build a better infrastructure and we may not be the best anymore. I totally agree. But recently, I read another interesting report. McKenzie says that Singapore has earned a smart city status. Why? Is that so? Because of our Singapore brand. Singaporeans, or rather Singapore, is known for our honesty. Singapore is known for our efficiency. Singapore is known for our government and no corruption. All these factors, sometimes we take it for granted, but truly, we are astoundingly good. We are really blessed to live in Singapore. I'd like to quote our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. He says, it is not accident that we got here. Every possible thing that could have gone wrong, we tried to PM. This is how we got here. Why we have substantial reserves. Because if we do not have reserves, the moment we run into trouble, we have nothing. All we have is this functioning organism, which requires brain specialized skills put together in very intricate form with inputs from many nations and their experts in financial services, manufacturing, tourism, all sorts of economic activities put together, it is not easy to replicate. I consider this to be the best contribution I can make, the most worthy, worthwhile thing to do. Our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, on strategic thinking and policy making. 
I feel so blessed to be a Singaporean. I come to the last point for today, number seven, why you should be looking at property market or rather properties right now is that for planning purposes and their attractive deals on the market. Today, making a property purchase decision is not easy because it requires a lot of planning, a lot of uh, coordination with your family, uh, working out. So there are a few steps, simple steps I'd like to point out to you. Number one, work out your IPA, your in principle approval with a banker to check how much based on your age, based on your income, they can support you with leveraging from the bank. Number two, discuss with your family and loved ones. What are your needs? What are your wants? What are children's schooling? So on and so forth. Number three, engage an agent that can give you insights that tells you what are the options available in the market and gives you the strengths and weaknesses, a, a, a rundown of what all the things that they offer. Number four, chart out the timeline because it's a process that takes months. Since all of us are in circuit breaker at home, let's all take good planning. Number five, plan for decoupling and trust if needed. Because some of us may choose to hold our property and there are ways that you must discuss with your agent. I believe they'll point you to the right uh, legal advisor on how to achieve all this. And number six, I can tell you one thing, though you are trapped at home, you can still visit show flats because we have a lot of virtual tours that's they're ready, ready for you to take a look. And even in the comfort of your home, you can have a sense of how the property projects are. Last but not the least, there are attractive deals out there. Because of this COVID-19 situation, developers has also rolled out a series of discount programs that will help you to make a purchasing decision in the midst of all this among us. We can see like Mayfair Modern, there's one price promo, Treasure based on unit types, they give you discount. Jetscape, there's also a straight $8,000 discount given for one bedroom types. There are many more that you can speak to your agent. I believe they can show you some more options. In conclusion, today I hope the 45 minutes that I shared with you, i given you some clarity in the midst of all this chaos. I always share with my customers that when we buy a property, it's probably the biggest investment of your life. You must buy with confidence. What is confidence? It's knowledge in your head and believe in your heart. I always have knowledge, knowing the situation that's ahead, not just what is happening around us, and also a belief in the market. Because just like Warren Buffett, he says when you invest, you must invest with belief. In a nutshell, I shared seven reasons. Reason number one, there's lesser supply in future due to less, due to the on-block fever has ended. Number two, there will be more demand given that HDB MOP upgraders are coming onto the market. Number three, the current supply has been taken up. It's been really healthy, as you can see. Number four, foreign buyers will return once the travel restrictions are all lifted. Number five, make use of the low bank interest rates. As you can see, governments will be using expansionary fiscal policies. Definitely bank interest rates will stay low. Number six, the effects of stimulus. As we have shown you earlier, how what happened in Lehman Brothers, the same effect will happen in this round. After COVID is over, prices, inflation will happen. Number seven, for your planning and looking at attractive deals in the market. So thank you for your time. I'm so glad that you have sat through this sharing by me. And upcoming ahead, there's two more webinars that we have planned for you. My colleague, Elvin, will be sharing with you a property hotspot after Circuit Breaker is lifted. And our Christine Sun, Head of Research Department, will be sharing about investing in crisis why, how do you make out of investment in crisis? So stay tuned, connect with your agents. If you do not have an Orange Tea agent, you can go to 
www.propertyagentsreview.com and I believe you can find an agent that's expert in your area, able to help you to make the right property decision. So thank you for your time. I'm so, uh, I hope that you can stay safe and all of us will be out soon. We'll stay at home and enjoy our time with our family and our loved ones. Thank you. Stay safe and God bless you. Thank you so much.